Hello, everybody. Welcome to this special episode of Stream Geeks, where we're doing industry professional interviews. Today, we have Tom Sinclair from Eastern Shore Broadcasting. I can't wait to interview him after this. So Tom, thank you so much for being with us here via vMix call. I um, wanted to ask you about Eastern Shore Broadcasting, your company that you're the CEO of. Tell us about the inspiration of the start of your company. Well, Paul, it all started back in 2008. Have we got enough time for this story? No, no you don't. <laughs> um, I, was, I was taking pictures of my kids' soccer games and somebody said, can you do video? And I said, yes. And then later they said, can you do live video? And I said, yes, and I didn't know how, and I went and figured it out. And we did a soccer tournament one weekend and had thousands of online viewers. This was like 07. And I knew whatever this thing was, we, it didn't even have a name for it back then, but I knew it was going to be a thing, and I knew I wanted to be involved in it. And it, that's where it came from. We took a, 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 a webcam and duct taped it to a tripod. <laughs> wow. I love that story of, of how you started. Now Tom provides, you know, uh, custom live streaming systems to some of the industry's biggest names, uh, including vMix. So Tom, um, let me allow you to explain your business. And, and who is your typical customer, would you say? There is no such thing as a typical customer. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing because virtually anybody can get involved in, in live streaming. You don't even have to have a business. I had a client a couple of years ago who had a passion for teaching people how to make shoes. And I'm not just talking about flip-flops made from old tires. I'm talking about real shoes. And, and that was his hobby. And, he got, and, and if he walked up and down his street in New York, he probably couldn't find anybody interested. But if he got on the internet, he could find hundreds and hundreds of people that were interested. And so he live streamed his hobby of making shoes. And that's where I came in is to help him learn how to do that and have the right tools to do it. But it, it could be a local business. It could be a professional. It could be a church. It could be a school, a sports team, a city council. I mean, the, the list goes on and on and on of people that can benefit by having a live stream as part of whatever their, their organization does. Very interesting. And now you've turned this demand for live streaming and making it professional and doing it in a business setting into a real business. And what would you say your core services are at Eastern Shore Broadcasting? The most important thing about what we do is we help people understand the process so that they can make their best decisions in acquiring the hardware and software they need to accomplish what they want to accomplish with live streaming. So many people call us and they say, well, I've got this camera, I've got this microphone, and I've got this and I've got that. Well, <laughs> those don't work together. That's why you're calling me is because you spent a lot of money. You, you paid some, some education tax by buying the wrong stuff. Now let's go back and talk about what, what are your needs. Let's start with your needs. Let's don't start with the toys. You know, do you need a pickup truck or do you need a semi? Well, a pickup truck's not going to do the work of a semi, and a semi is not going to do the work of a pickup. So let's find out what your needs are and get, get honed in. And then sometimes that might mean that it's a custom system that we build for them. Sometimes it might mean that they're repurposing something that they already have. Sometimes it might mean it's a, it's a solution that calls for a PTZ Optics camera, which we're happy to provide. It may require a, a, a complete workflow analysis in order to figure out how they're going to get everything they want done. So what we do is we, we bring our knowledge and experience to the table. And sometimes that means products and services too. Very interesting. So you, you have a, a, a lot of uh, kind of handholding in the beginning, trying to figure out what the goals are and, uh, you know, putting your experience to work seems like your main value add, which I think is incredible. Um, tell me about this new world of online video, whether it's live or not. Video seems to be really a changing landscape that uh, is really powerful for almost any type of organization, as you mentioned. Over the years, how have you seen it change and maybe some interesting uh, applications for your customers? Holy cow. I started my live 
weekly online sh video show in 2012. So we're in our sixth year or seventh year, depending on how you do the math. And back then it was all standard definition. It was four, three aspect ratio. It was, it was very crude, but you still could get the message across. The tools have improved and we're, we can do a better job of it now. And now it looks more like television than ever before. Pick your favorite TV show and you can just about see something that's the equivalent of it um, out in the World Wide Web as live or pre-recorded video. It's, it's amazing. I don't think there are any limits. I don't think there are any limits to what it's going to look like in the future. That's very interesting, and it leads into my next question about Facebook Live, because Facebook Live has been around for about, maybe about a year and a half. Here we are, January of 2018, and perhaps because of the quality g coming up so much and the ability to almost deliver a television quality experience online, maybe that's why Facebook has jumped on, but no matter what their reasoning is, they've got uh, more than a billion users. How has Facebook Live and just Facebook in general, because uh, I know you have a very active Facebook user group. How has that changed uh, the landscape and, and how people are looking at live streaming? Golly, how much time do we have? Do we have three hours? We <laughs> might could scratch the surface of that question in three hours. But let me give you a, a, a quick story. I, I talked to somebody this morning that wants to do live streaming at their church. And... They said, you know, we, we, we're not sure where we start. And I said, well, why don't you start where everybody might expect you to start? Everybody in the church has a phone. They bring it to church every Sunday. On their phone is their Facebook app. And so if they check in on their Facebook app at church every Sunday before they mute their cell phone for the rest of the service, and if you're doing a live stream, everybody that's their friend will know that they are in church right now. And some of their friends will want to go look at their Facebook page to see what their church looks like. And when they look at the church's Facebook page, they say, oh, there's a live stream going on. So they look at the live stream. And suddenly you've take, taken a whole situation where people were sitting at home, not doing anything, and now they're engaged in a church's live stream that they wouldn't have been able to do had not Facebook Live existed. That's, I think that says a whole lot just in that one little scenario. I think you're right, and I'm so glad you told a real story that happened to you just today because uh, everyone that we've interviewed has taken that question a different way, uh, but almost everyone understands that social media is a different type of animal and it's just integrated into the fabric of society today in an interesting way that everyone has a different take on, but the fact that live streaming's there and communities are there, businesses are there, our neighbors are there, our friends are there. It's just a very interesting um, topic that's really been, uh, uh, I think, growing the live streaming industry. I think everyone can agree on that. Um, the next question I wanted to ask you, and this is very obvious for you, but I've asked everyone this, are your customers live streaming today? Some are, most are, a lot aren't. I'll, 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 I was talking with somebody this morning and, and at their particular location, they have bad internet. They don't have enough internet speed to be able to live stream. So they're recording, they're uploading it later, and they're doing a, v a, a viewing on demand situation. I had a client this morning I was talking to that he records his live shows where he interviews live guests, much like we're doing right now, and then plays it back later because he doesn't want to do it live live. He wants to do it what they would used to call live to tape. And now he's, he's recording it and broadcasting it later. But I think there's a, a, a certain something, I was going to say magic, but it might be even more than that. A certain something to live that you don't get with something that's recorded and seen later. Live is like now. Live is like Whatever it is, it is. If it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. If the audio's got problems, it, you got problems in the audio, but it's real. It has that authentic element to it that says this hasn't been recorded and polished up and they cut out all the foibles and they, you know, they muted the, the person breathing in the background and they made all these fixes. No, this is the way it really, really happened. And, and I think the fact that live is real gives it an authoritativeness. Is that even a word? It <laughs> gives it a, a, a specialness that you don't get with recorded video. It's yeah. just like you and I were sitting in the same room having a conversation. 
And if you give me a testimonial, I think I'm more likely to believe it because it's live than if it's recorded. And it's very interesting that you mentioned that. We did a show on Stream Geeks talking about how maybe live testimonials can be one of the best ways to uh, interview your customers uh, because it's authentic. And, and I'm glad you brought that up. The, the last question I have for you, uh, a lot of our interviews have actually been here in Westchester, Pennsylvania. And LinkedIn has just uh, published their 2018 report on the status of the workforce here. And um, one of the scarcest resources is actually the number one scarcest resource and by that, they mean, um, you know, employees is television broadcasters and video producers is actually number two. So I believe that that has something to do with the demand for video and the lack of possibly educated slash trained video producers to meet that demand where so much uh, demand. And this is literally January 2018. It's not the most in demand job, but the scarcest job because there's just not enough people in the workforce to meet the demand. You're from Fairhope, Alabama, and I understand that you're, bringing, you're starting a brick and mortar store similar to what we're doing. I wonder if you're seeing the same demand in Alabama or if your uh, business just reaches uh, so far around the globe that it's a kind of a global demand in a globalized economy. But either way, are you feeling this growth in demand for video production? No, no, I'm sad. There's no growth and there's no demand for video production. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. Um, I, you know, in terms of the bricks and mortar, I really don't know. Until I get out and start hitting the streets and talking to people about what's going on, I don't know what demand there is locally. I know there's a, a national demand. I know there's an international demand. I know in the, in the world of live streaming, there's a great demand. But whether in my little town of 20,000 people, Fairhope, Alabama, nestled on the, the uh, Gulf of Mexico and, and Mobile Bay, it's, it's, it's a heavenly place. Whether there's a demand for live video here, we'll find out. But it also may be like our church scenario. Whereas somebody sitting at home, they're not thinking about going to church, much less walk, watching one on, on TV until it pops up on their friend's Facebook page and, and they take a peek. It may be that the city of Fairhope, Alabama, hasn't really thought about what would happen if we live streamed our parades and our festivals. And if we did a, a, a Stream Geeks, a la Stream Geeks, uh, retail interview with, with a, a store downtown and started a Fairhope Today show that ran every Friday morning talking about what's going on in the city. I don't know that there's a demand. I think we may have to meet a, a need that people haven't even expressed yet. Well, I think they you say, put that very oh, this well. this is great. That, that's, that's exactly what we're finding as well. And throughout this interview series, um, here we are in 2018. It seems like the year of video, the year of live streaming, but I think we have so much, so much room to grow. So much more, many more people are going to jump on board. And hopefully as we open up these brick and mortar stores, having a place for people to see it as they walk down the street. I think that's what's really going to make the difference uh, in the small businesses and the fabrics of our community. Um, so it sounds like um, I'm, I'm just so excited to see what, what, what you're doing over there in Fairhope, Alabama, uh, what we're doing over here in Westchester to make it more accessible. Uh, throughout this interview series, if you get a chance to watch some of these, Tom, we have everybody from a marketer who's super excited to tell all of their customers to use live video to a video production uh, company who's only done one live stream ever. It was the scariest experience of their life. It was a single camera shoot and they, they were just frightened by the experience. So uh, everywhere in between, I know you're very comfortable on live video. Your show's been out there for six or seven years, depending on how, how we're counting. Um, so was, I'm so glad that we got to have you on the show, Tom, because you have a very interesting perspective. Thank you for your time today. And uh, if anyone's out there who's interested in the video production and live streaming market, um, we have a 
referral network where we introduce you to local video production experts that we've met and you know really kind of vetted to to see if they can provide high quality services possibly for your business in a local area so check out streamgeeks.us and look at our referral network to find a local stream geek don't forget to like this video and maybe share it with somebody who might need to learn a little bit more about what it's like to be a live video streamer or meet a producer like tom and that's our show everybody thanks for taking the time to watch